Stories with a voice like this presents Bright Thoughts and Joyful Tales, designed by J. H. Howard and published by McLaughlin Brothers. Fanny Fanny has been up with the lark and out in the fields gathering a nosegay of wild flowers and has brought them home all bright with the morning dew and laid them upon her mother's lap, her sweet face beaming with health and pleasure. Fanny is an only child and much petted, but she is not a spoiled child, and nothing would hurt her kind little heart more than to be called by that name. She lives in a nice house with Papa and Mama, and Papa, who is very fond of her, will chase her round the garden at times or carry her on his shoulders. In short, do everything he can to make her happy. And Fanny knows how much she pleases her parents by being good. Robert Robert was a clever boy at school. His teachers were very fond of him and took great delight in getting him on with his lessons. His mama had no trouble with him, for he would go into his room with his favorite, Rover, and learn his lessons without a murmur. He was very anxious to know about everything, and often puzzled his mama by asking more questions than she could answer. Sometimes, when it was dark, he would slip into his room and have a peep at the moon and stars. Once he looked through a telescope at the moon and saw the dark spots upon it they call mountains. Robert was a good boy, and made up his mind to learn his lessons well and know everything. George and his Sisters There was an old widow who dwelt in a cottage not far from the home where George and his sisters lived. George had heard his mamma say how poor the widow was, and that often in the winter time she could not even afford herself a fire. This made George very sad and one cold winter's morning, when he and his sisters were about to take their usual walk, he begged leave to take his wheelbarrow with him. And great was the surprise of his sisters to see him filling it up with all the withered branches he could pick up. But greater still was their surprise when they saw him stop at the widow's door, and heard him say they were all for the poor old woman who was too feeble to gather them herself. Carrie and her cousins. It was a great day for Carrie when she obtained permission from Mama to take her little cousins into the country for a holiday, and quite as great a day for the little cousins when they heard the good news. So off they all went, Harry and his four sisters and baby, in charge of their kind cousin, who did not forget to provide something nice for them to eat. What a happy day they made of it, scampering through the meadows and thinking of nothing but fun and happiness. How delightful it must have been to have sat under the shadows of the big trees, pulling the pretty cowslips and twisting them into long chains to take home to Mama. Don't you wish, my little readers, you had been there? Ned and Nora it was a rainy day, and Ned wanted to play in the garden, but Mama said he would only get wet and catch cold. So Ned sat down and sulked, while his sister Nora played with her doll and made herself happy. "'I want to play in the garden,' said Ned peevishly. "'I hate sticking in the room all day. It isn't right of Mama to keep me here.' "'Oh, Ned, oh, Ned!' cried Nora, taking his hand. "'How can you say such naughty things?' Only think how kind and good Mama is, and what trouble she takes to make you happy. I am glad to see you crying, Ned, for I know you are sorry for what you have said. Ned was sorry, and begged Mama to forgive him. He said he would try and be a good boy, and not sulk any more. Johnny and Mary Not far from the house where Johnny and Mary lived was a duck pond, where the ducks could be seen swimming about, and Johnny and Mary had often been cautioned against going near the water. But one day, when Mama was busy, Johnny asked Mary to go with him to the pond. He was sure they wouldn't be missed. So off they went, and Johnny, in his eagerness to see the ducks, slipped into the pond, and it was only by leaving his shoe in the mud that he got out again. 
Mary, too, in trying to help him, tore her dress. So they were both in a sad state, and began to cry, but worse than all was the thought that they had disobeyed a kind and affectionate mamma. Sam Sam's father had a boat, and Sam used to sail in it every evening as soon as school was over and he could get his sister or any other person he liked to go with him. The river ran behind the house and was very deep in some places, which frightened Sam's mother a good deal. But Sam had no fear, and whether he pulled merrily at the oars or lay half asleep in the sunshine at the bottom of the boat, he was bold and fearless, and always said he intended being a sailor some day and seeing all sorts of wonderful places, that is, if his papa and mamma will let him. For Sam, although he loves the water, is not a boy to do anything without the consent of his parents. Papa I say, Jack, said Edith and Mary to their brother one morning, when they had a holiday and no lessons to learn, what fun would it be to get Papa out in the field and then cover him over with hay? Will you help us, Jack? Jack was highly pleased at the idea, so the three set about trying to coax Papa into the field. Please take me out to see the hay, Papa, said little Mary. Papa was very fond of Mary, so he set her upon his shoulders and took her out to see the hay. Jack and Edith followed unseen, and when Papa sat down behind a hedge, they collected armfuls of hay and, rushing from their hiding places, completely covered Papa and Mary over, laughing and shouting all the time. 